Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Grade Ups MBA Prep Channel. Today we have with us Abhishek Rajathyaksh. Uh, he is an alumnus of JBIMS, and an interesting thing about him is that he has been a professional cricketer. Before joining JB, he was a professional cricketer, and uh, he wanted to pursue an MBA. So he switched his stream. People talk about switching streams and all. So he switched. From being a cricketer to an MBA graduate, so uh, welcome Abhishek to this show. Uh, please introduce yourself uh, to the viewers. Thanks, Prana, for for having me. First of all, uh, so my name is Abhishek Rajatyaksha. Uh, I graduated out of JBMS in 2019. Uh, so uh, academically, I am an MCom graduate, uh, and I graduated out of Arya Kudar College in Mumbai. Uh, post that. I did my MBA from JBMS in 2019. Uh, out of campus, uh, I worked with DBS for around a year and a half. Uh, and this year in March, I joined JP Morgan in their uh, corporate banking, so credit risk team for their APAC business. Uh, like Prano mentioned, I was also a professional cricketer, so I represented Mumbai at the national level in age group tournaments, and I've also played internationally. So I actually spent a summer uh, playing. league cricket in scotland so yeah that that was something which was just a brief introduction about me okay, so you have quite a diverse profile right so uh, so why did you uh, go for an mba i mean you could have built a career in cricket uh, so why did you go for an mba so i think uh, while i was playing cricket right uh, you see a lot of people playing cricket but not all of them kind of go to that next level and play either ranji trophy cricket or international cricket for india so uh, i think when i was about 22 if i am not wrong in 2016 i sort of felt that my cricket was becoming a lot stagnant than i would have wanted and i wasn't progressing to play further levels of cricket which was obviously like i mentioned state cricket or international cricket so at that point then i've always had like an inclination for accounting and finance so accounting was my major during my bcom and my mcom so i was actually interested in that and that being a very small section of finance i was obviously inclined towards finance so at that point in 2016 2017 i sort of made the decision as to whether i would uh, want to keep playing cricket and at that time i felt that i wouldn't want to keep playing cricket at the club level for all my life and uh, do something with it so so i wanted to pursue uh, my passion for finance and actually in 2016 i did not know anything about mba or any entrances that uh, take place so in june i just spoke to a couple of senior uh, family members and people who've done mba Uh, and then they mentioned that uh, you have all these exams which are CAT and MATS, AT, etc. And all, of course the CET. So in June 2016, I actually started prepping for all of these exams, and uh, there my journey towards MBA actually started. Right. So uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So it's a good decision, right? It's not necessary that you continue in one thing forever. So, uh, how did you manage your preparation? You said you were doing your uh, MCom, you were playing cricket as well, and then preparing as well, and uh, you came out with flying colours in the examination. So, what was your preparation? How was how was your uh, particular day? Right, typical day would look like for you. Actually, uh, so MCom was usually something which was uh, not too hectic, to be honest. So it is not like full time college per se. Although you have a lot of classes in the evening, uh, because a lot of people pursue MCom while they are doing a job. So a lot of lectures were towards the evening. But I also uh, got a lot of time from that because I was playing cricket. So I was actually college captain for Kodar also. So I could actually skip some sessions. and go for practice so usually my day started in the morning around 8 8:30 i used to wake up uh do so in the mornings i actually had my coaching classes so i used to go for cat prep so that would be around 8 to 10 uh then come back study for a while uh have lunch study for another 2 hours before uh, i actually went for practice around 3 3:30 and came back around 7:30 8 uh so in the evenings i actually did not uh, do too much of studying but it was just minor things that you could brush up without having to focus a lot so like 
looking at formulas or looking at words for vocabulary that you can keep practicing while you are just walking in your house or things like that so i think uh, the major studying part that i had or conceptual clarity that i wanted was in the mornings when i was fresh while if i had to brush up on formulas or just look at some questions that i wanted to solve which i could do or time based practice is something that i kept for the evening so that was uh, how my day was structured when i was pursuing mcom playing cricket and also prepping for my mba exams this is how uh, uh, one manages time right so people keep complaining that we have scarcity of time it's not about that it's about what things you prioritize on and uh, like each one of us has 24 hours and how one decide to spend those hours so uh, yes you did utilize in a very good manner okay so uh, so abhishek uh, like you didn't mention you just told you were a cricketer what what role you had in the team i was uh... Uh, an opening batsman and that's been throughout my career so i was always an opening batsman from the start uh, so i don't have like a story about sachin tendulkar not being uh, allowed to bowl and then he turned into a batsman i don't have anything of that sort i was a batsman all throughout so i was an opening batsman uh, for all the teams that i played for okay so you were an opening batsman and uh, uh, then so let us now come to uh, your preparation yes you had uh, uh, you had your well defined time table you stuck to it and you utilize your time so uh, now the thing is about you got a decent score in cdt right uh, so let us talk about that the examination day right how did you do in the examination so how did you open the examination as an opening batsman you said you were an opening batsman how would and uh, how would a person should open an examination i think uh, you can actually correlate your ct exam to a t20 game right you have like 120 balls in a game you have 150 minutes here and you want to try to solve as many questions as you can but you have 200 questions which are the maximum so i think for me uh, the start was quite important like any sport that you play you want to start off on a good note so i for the first 5 to 10 minutes, I actually scanned through specific sections that I was strong at. So in my case, it was LR. So I skimmed through that section just to take a feel of how difficult or easy the section was. Uh, and then basically, uh, for me, it was always that once you have a good base and once you start off well in the first, say, 20, 25 minutes, you know that, okay, you are getting questions right, you are able to solve questions, you are also able to manage time. That's when you get into that mode of actually trying to get as many questions right as you can. So I think that base that you set, because you are under a lot of pressure since it's a one-off game, it's like a final that you play, right? You have only one chance that you will get. And if you do well, you get in. If you don't, then it just one year later, like a World Cup comes four years later, you don't know whether you will get that chance. So I think that initial five or 10 minutes of just analyzing how easy or difficult specific sections which you are strong or weak are at helps you a lot to gauge uh, the overall complexity of the exam. Uh, and then you can start actually with the strategy that you have or with the section order that you have. So I think that helped me on that day understand that uh, LR was difficult and that question selection would play a key role, at least for my uh, year in 2017, question selection would play a key role. So I think that helped me at the start. Uh, also, when you start well, you kind of know that you're ahead of time a little bit. So at the end, when you are actually under pressure, when you have say 30 minutes and you've got 60 questions to solve, you know that the time that you spent earlier, you spent it doing questions correctly with good accuracy as well as you were solving the majority of the questions. So if I say I solved 140 questions within uh, 120 minutes with a good enough accuracy of say 80 to 85%, I am almost there, right? The last 30 minutes is sort of me just pushing my score to the next level. So I think... Uh, the start matters, but keeping that consistency and not getting flustered by a difficult section or a difficult set or a difficult question is important. And uh, if you don't get it in, say, 30 seconds or 45 seconds, 
you should just move on to the next question mark an answer and move on because uh, unlike cat cet does not allow you a lot of time to think for questions so it's a very focused speed based exams where speed based exam where question selection is the key and you can't get attached to questions so if you don't get it don't sit there thinking that i'm good at math how can i not get this one move on you will get an easy question somewhere else at the end of the day no one will ask you whether you scored 13 quant or you scored 15 lr or you scored 35 in verbal the final score matters and there is no uh, section cut off so at the end of the day it matters how much you score out of those 200 questions so uh, it is quite similar to a t20 game and i think i correlated it uh, that way during my final exam also yeah so it's a very good strategy like uh, you can correlate as a power play of a t20 game that in the beginning you just uh, you just get up to a flying start start with your easy uh, like the easy sections that you leave are easy for you because that could be different for everyone for example for me quant could be very uh, very fast right but there could be some other person who would be very good at verbal so it depends on person to person so always start with the strongest section and of course as you said that uh, that keeps on building your confidence you have done a considerable number of questions correct so you know that okay you are almost there and that would definitely reduce pressure from you in the last few minutes right and also a good suggestion that uh, see you know that uh, being a cricketer that you should avoid bouncers or uh, unplayable deliveries likewise do not get attached to any particular question right even if you are a quant genius do not think that why are you not able to solve it just move on to another question and uh, uh, just you will find some questions or the other right and yes there are too many questions and of course there are plenty of easy and moderate questions that you can tackle okay so uh, so how did you handle pressure like a uh, lot of people they prepare well but when it comes to the examination uh, uh, they they could not handle the pressure they are unable to do well so what were the things that help you help you tackle pressure during this uh, a lot of it comes from me actually playing cricket right so a lot of people believe that uh, you go out there and you do your best but a lot of it comes from practice and how you practice i think the process is something that matters a lot and i think that helped me so even during my preparation or my mocks i made it a point that uh, i had the perfect strategy in place so what i mean by perfect strategy here is uh, i actually switched a lot of sections around during my mocks to understand uh, when i start with a particular section uh, do i start off well or i don't start off well do i take a lot of time or do i breeze through that quickly so that helped me sort of formulate a strategy where i knew that this was the sort of time i wanted to give to a particular section and like you said that in case you get bouncers you just evade them you just leave them and move to the next section because you will have easy and moderate questions spread across sections so i think on exam day what helped me was uh, i actually had the order of starting with verbal uh, doing abstract then doing lr and then quant at the end so uh, by the time that i had actually finished abstract i had a decent amount of time so i had around 90 minutes left to do 125 questions for the last two sections when i started lr i remember that uh, for us in that year lr was the difficult section and there were a lot of sets which would take you a lot of time so i think for me in that section what was crucial was picking the right sets and then trying to solve them because if you do a set well you will get four to question four to five questions right easy if you don't you will obviously be stuck therein lies how you've prepped uh, how you selected questions in the past and also you can also pick uh, sets which have independent questions so not every set will have questions that are linked to each other some sets will have questions that you can answer without solving the entire set so i think that helped me sort of cover up for not having enough time for quant so i remember i had around 25 to 30 minutes left for 50 questions of quant and like i said since that wasn't my uh, strongest sweep uh i felt that since i have already solved 150 questions with a decent accuracy 
I can actually go for it and sort of finish off well at the end and lo- like how or like you would say Dhoni finishes or finishes it off in style. So I could actually do that because I had my first one uh, twenty minutes sorted in a way where I went with my strategy. So I think uh, even though uh, practice is important. uh maintaining pressure in a way where like i mentioned you don't get too flustered if a section is difficult because if it's difficult for you it's difficult for everyone even if some might some people might be uh better at quant and they might not feel that quant is difficult they might feel verbal is difficult which might not be that difficult for you so all in all the entire exam is kind of a level playing field where some sections are difficult for you and some are difficult for others and so i think it matters how much patience you have and how calm you are during the exam so even if you feel okay last 10 questions i spent a little more time that i should have the next 10 you don't carry that forward so i think uh, you don't take the pressure all throughout if you're feeling the pressure in the middle a little bit grab a glass of water or take a sip of water calm down start your exam again so i think that's something that helped me from uh, playing cricket to actually uh, giving the cet where in one you had enough practice you had a process in place and then you had to take that process into match day obviously there are a lot of uncertainties like in a game you don't know who are their strongest bowlers so here you would not know which sections are the toughest or you would not know what sort of time you would spend so i think a uh, process matters a lot and that kind of helped me from uh, my cricketing days to actually using that in the final cet exam yeah so it is analogous to playing a final game and as an examination as he rightly said that you have just one chance so you can consider it as a final and you have to give your best so uh, it is important to keep your nerves if you hold your nerves and uh, be cool right if you have practiced well right Uh, see if uh, so you should not worry like the ones uh, who have uh, covered all the have all the basics set in place have practiced enough have done uh, a good number of mocks and uh, yes that should be a good thing and as uh, abhishek rightly said that experiment do what all experiments you want to do you should do in the mock test right so that you have a perfect study in uh, strategy in place for the game so as you see that in cricket also sometimes Uh, like uh, teams shuffle their players try to find the best fit for the final so likewise whatever is experiment you want to do you want to start with verbal in one mock you can do that in the other mock you start with quant reasoning and then ar and whatever strategy that you have to uh, figure out for yourself you can figure out in the mocks so by the way abhishek how many mocks did you take and what is the number that you would recommend to the aspirants To be honest, I actually took around ten or twelve mocks. So I started prepping for CET after a lot of my interviews got over for other exams. So I would say in uh, so our CET was in March, in the first week of March, and I started prepping for CET uh, very seriously in February. So I think I took around ten or twelve mocks. Uh, like I mentioned, I switched around sections in uh, all of these mocks. i wouldn't say there is like a perfect number because uh, for me it was about switching sections to understand what sort of strategies were working because uh, in 10 or 12 mocks you kind of realize uh, different difficulty levels across sections so maybe if i only give two mocks i would not understand or maybe in both mocks quant was difficult that would not be the case if i have a bigger sample set but that doesn't mean that in two mocks you can not be ready i think a lot of it was or comes down to how you analyze mocks so i think if you give two and a half hours to actually giving the exam you have to give around 3 3 and a half hours to analyzing that mock and by analyzing i don't just mean checking how much you got in each section or which uh, questions you got wrong understanding why you got them wrong so i think a lot of it comes down to one either you made a silly mistake on that day you made a calculation error or you did not know the concept so i think if it's a silly mistake it's not that much of an issue you just have to be a little more cautious and a little more vigil when you're giving the exam if it's a com- conceptual error then you actually have to go back and look at those concepts so i think even when you're analyzing a mock how i would do it is i would start solving the questions that i got wrong 
before actually seeing the solution so during the exam i might have just got flustered and might have just uh, sort of given away that question but i think when i analyzed mocks i actually sat down and tried to solve it before looking at the solution that helped me understand whether uh, like i said it was a conceptual error or was it a simple mistake so i think there is no sort of perfect number to giving mocks but i would highly recommend people to actually switch across sections uh, and have that strategy in place that strategy you have to be flexible obviously you can't go in with saying okay i will give 40 minutes to this and irrespective of how easy or difficult the section is in the final exam i will still give 40 minutes so i i am not saying you be rigid with your strategy but it's good to have a strategy in place where you know okay if things go right this is how i want it to progress if uh, there are uncertainties which definitely will be okay i will mold my strategy across so i think that's more important than the number of mocks you give uh because they will only prepare you to face certain situations which you will face in the final exam yeah so exactly the number should not be too few right as you rightly said in two mocks maybe they were of similar flavor and uh, you could not get the uh, the perfect idea but yes having uh, said that if you take around 10 to 12 mocks that is good enough to give you different flavors difficult papers easy papers section wise difficulty variation and uh, as abhishek rightly said that uh, you have to be flexible right so in case let us say you are very strong with quant right and uh, in the examination it turns out that uh, the quant section is the most difficult so think that if you are finding it difficult all the aspirants would find it difficult right so do not stick to i mean you have to change your strategy accordingly that if you feel that quant is difficult then there must be some other section that will be easy in the, in the, easy in the paper and you should go ahead and spot that and do that or else the entire paper will be difficult so do not panic in that situation as uh, he said that he was strong with lr however that year lr turned out to be the most difficult section so he kept his calm and then he picked the right sets and then moved on to the other sections okay so let us see if we, if some users have some questions right so we have that uh, uh how much time should i allot to di sets okay so uh, can you tell something about di sets as well but to be honest uh, like i said right uh, there is no fixed time that you should allot for a di set but usually when i looked at sets right uh, some aspects that i looked at while selecting a set was one the number of parameters that you have in that set so if i have say a uh, 4 by 2 grid or a 4 by 4 grid that i have to fill in when i am solving or if i in a di set i have say a line i have three line graphs and two bar graphs that would actually help me understand the complexity of the set having said that there are some sets which are giving a lot of data but not a lot of data is actually useful when solving a question so after that you look at the number of questions so if i have say six questions then i might give it a try if there are only three with so much data i might not go for it the next aspect that i looked at was interconnectedness between questions so do i need to solve the entire set to solve all questions or are there questions which are individual within the set so there might be some questions that okay i don't need to solve the first three to solve the fourth whereas the first three are interlinked based on the answers to the first two i get the third one so that is something that you can follow during the exam uh, it is little difficult to actually go into so much detail but once you start giving mocks with that approach and you start selecting questions or di sets in that way uh, you can actually understand so for a five uh, question set you would want to give say 4 minutes if you solved uh, the entire set in 3 to 4 minutes then marking answers does not take time right so it's more about understanding whether you want to put in that much time for the set and there is no fixed time like i said so pranav might feel that okay this set is very easy for him i might feel that okay this set is really difficult for him so what worked for me will not work for him and vice versa and will not work for you either so i think it's important that you sort of uh, look at the complexity of the sets while deciding how much time you want to give yeah so uh, yeah as he rightly said that 
uh, whenever you it, and this again comes with practice right so uh, once you practice uh, a good number of questions you you have you build that ability uh, be it di be it lr in lr also you can figure out that whether it is going to be a difficult one based on the number of parameters based on the type of information that is given right have they mentioned the names of people in the beginning or they have mentioned in the paragraph so you know that if they are mentioned in the beginning then you have uh, like it is comparatively easy right i have to given some fixed position in a seating arrangement so you know that okay you can start with the statement and then can build up on it but if they have not given this you know that you will going to you going to make uh, sets uh, i mean make cases and then solve it so uh, giving a few seconds right so let's say 30 to 40, 40 seconds that is good enough to dodge the difficulty level of a particular set be it di or be it lr and that 30 40 seconds that help you save a lot of time because if you blindly go at one set and do it it might take you let's say 8 to 10 minutes but had you spent 30 seconds you would have realized this is not the right one you do another one which could probably be done in 5 minutes so maybe you did 5 minutes and 30 seconds but you saved the other time there right so that's a good strategy and uh, these should also be followed in your uh, like mock test and actual examination as well Okay, so Abhishek, uh, tell something about JBIMS. These people are aspiring to get into JBIMS. What makes it so special, right? What are the uh, things that people will experience uh, once they get into JBIMS? What are the different uh, things they will get to learn and all those stuff? So I think uh, for me, since I was a fresher when I got into JBIMS, that experience was a little different because. Uh, people who come with workex right they have some sort of understanding as to how corporates work or what sort of things do they look at so i think for me it was just uh, understanding what sort of uh, aspects did i want to take out from b school so i think what makes jbm a special in that way is that uh, one uh, you have a lot of industry experts who come to teach you at jbm so uh, there are a lot of senior alums who are CEOs or XMDs of companies which are like uh, in the Fortune 500 or which are in the Nifty 50 and they've been there for like 20, 25 years. So actually understanding uh, how industry looks at it and how you actually do it rather than just learning from a book is something that I think differentiates the learning experience at JBMS. Second, uh, I think it's. common across most b schools that it is student driven so a lot of initiatives are uh, driven by students be it uh, corporate sessions be it events be it uh, festivals uh, competitions etc so i think um, that gives you an exposure to also other colleges that uh, people will come from or you will interact with peers from other colleges and that exposure kind of helps you build your own network right at the end of the day when you go into the industry also Uh, you build a network so that in case you need any help from someone who is an expert in another field you can always reach out to them and kind of understand or kind of get some insights from them so i think that's the second thing uh, third i think which a lot of people focus on during their mba is the kind of corporates that come to campus so i think since uh, jbims is like in the center of mumbai uh, the nariman point area you have a lot of head offices of a lot of leading companies so i think a lot of them actually come to campus and offer good roles uh, not just roles that they offer but a lot of interaction that goes in with these corporates so you have interaction during internships during final placements during live projects during uh, corporate competitions so i think the kind of exposure that you get to the industry is something that uh, is a uh, a differentiating factor for jbms so i think those would be the major uh, parameters that you would choose jbms for yeah many times students just think about roi and those aspects but they should also think from this perspective yet i mean even if there are some institutes which might charge high fee right like in the case of the top ims but the the type of industry exposure that you get right the type of alums that you have Uh, the type of uh, like interactions that you have uh, be it corporate competitions and all those things so those are the things that make an institute great right it is not just uh, that it is uh, like the fee is comparatively low but yes that is an advantage you have in jb but the more important thing is its location 
uh, which is located in Mumbai. Lot of industry interaction, right? You have great alums. Uh, it is called the CEO factory of India, right? So you have a lot of people and. they are quite approachable right you can approach them and they have, you must be having a lot of guest lectures isn't it yeah so those are the things that uh, like even if you are fresher right you have no idea about corporates once you enter the b school you will get so much things to learn right you have to you have a lot of to learn from your peers from your seniors from your faculty members and from these industry people that after 2 years you come out at, as an or as a different person altogether Okay, so Abhishek, uh, you were from uh, like commerce background, so you knew uh, maybe finance was the thing for you. But can you tell me that you must be having some peers uh, uh, along with you, maybe who were from some other backgrounds or who had no idea that what they want to do after MBA, right? There are many right who did not know that which stream to go. So how does MBA decide to like how during the course of MBA you get to know that this is the right thing for me? At what stage and all those things? Because like, a lot of users keep asking us that: uh, Is it good for marketing? Is it should I go to this and that? So when when do you actually realize? So maybe you you were you already knew it, but you might have had peers who were of that scenario that they did not know what to do after MBA. So how did they get to learn? Uh, a lot of first year is actually spent understanding different aspects right so in the first year during the first semester as well as the second semester uh, you have all subjects so it's not specialization focused so you will have subjects from hr you will have subjects from marketing from operations uh, from statistics from finance we'll have accounting taxation etc so i think uh, during that time you start understanding what sort of things you like or maybe you definitely don't like so that might not actually help you decide say i don't like finance that might not help me decide whether i want to take marketing or operations but at least i know okay this sort of uh, field or this sort of job is something that i might not be very interested in so i think over the entire first year uh, you have an understanding of what sort of things you might want to do and which you didn't have obviously before you joined so you knew nothing about what is finance what is marketing you just know okay marketing matlab unilever someone is uh, actually making an advertisement that's not marketing advertising is a part but that's not entirely marketing a lot of people feel okay marketing folks just sit in swanky offices and ac rooms and sort of build a strategy or build things like that or finance folks just do investment banking so i think that's not uh, a true representation of what these fields are but i think over the first year you sort of understand what things you like and what you don't like and i think a major factor in you deciding which stream you want to take is also your internship right so since in the first year you don't know during summer internship placement process you usually apply for all roles that you think you might be wanting to go into and once you do that internship say you interned in say investment banking and uh, you found it good you might actually then want to take finance even though you are an engineer you might want to brush up those skills and you can do finance there is no uh, thing as that engineer cannot do finance there are so many engineers who are very good at finance and vice versa also that people who are from commerce background will only be good at finance there are a lot of people who have done marketing or operations also so i think the internship is something that helps you understand what sort of roles you would actually want to get into a lot of roles are very structured a lot of roles are not structured or they are very open ended and give you a lot of freedom as to how you would want to uh, do your two month project whereas some roles will be very structured so say an equity research or an investment banking role would be very structured in the way that they go through the steps of a deal or of analyzing a company whereas say a strategy project or a gtm project for your internship might be very unstructured and you can come up with ideas and you can build your own sort of understanding and take the senior management through it so i think that is an important aspect that helps you kind of understand whether you want to take marketing or operations and even after that you have around a month or two at, at least at jbms to decide which stream you want to get into so that helps you actually understand uh, based on the first year subjects 
as well as your internship experience and understanding for our peers who also interned at different uh, companies and different roles as to what they were doing and whether you would be interested in doing those sort of roles or those sort of jobs so i think that helps you sort of first understand what you like or don't like then actually experience that during your internship and then decide based on both of those and your peer experiences what stream you would want to take so i would say don't worry too much about okay i don't know what i want to do because a lot of people uh, go under that pressure of okay my roommate knows he wants to do finance or she wants to do finance but i don't know so am i lagging behind them you are not lagging behind you are just taking more time to uh, actually understand what you want to do it's better that you take more time now than deciding and then feeling okay nahi maybe i should have uh, taken marketing or i should have taken operations so i think that time is just like your ct exam right you take that 5 minutes in this case you take that time to understand what you want to do or what you don't want to do and then move uh, ahead from that yeah so uh, yeah so students at this stage uh, should not worry about these things they should just focus on cracking cd those things taken would be taken of care of later and i would like to add uh, one to your point plus the industry instruction in interactions that you have that also help you understand that what things i mean say for example uh, you have some workshop on product management right so you will get to understand okay this is these are the things i find them fancy right so i should be doing this there are industry experts as you have a lot in uh, jbims right so people keep talking about the current trends maybe you are not not a person who would like to go in some conventional finance or marketing role but might, you might be interested in some tech based product kind of role right or you could have uh, interest in some other role some emerging maybe you are interested in ai right so you would get to understand with those inter- industry interactions and all these things collectively your uh, your academic curriculum your peers your end in, in internships etc collectively will you that personality so that you decide okay this is the thing for me okay okay so we have a query from uh, ankita she says that i am planning to give three days each to prepare basics of every section like three days for lr and so on will that be right okay so uh, she means to say that like while preparing all like for few days you study one topic and then next days or should you be doing like every day all topic mix so what should be the strategy i think uh, i wouldn't suggest that you do one section for 3 days and then move on to the next section for another 3 days because uh, say you give 3 days to each section uh, on the 10th day when you start the fourth section you might not remember what you did on the first day so it's advisable that you split your time in a day and split that across sections so you do say 2 hours of verbal some days you can do more of something and less of something but i wouldn't suggest that you spend the entire day doing just lr or spend the entire day doing just uh, verbal because that's now how, that's not how your exam will be structured so i did it in a way where uh, when i was at my freshest i did things that i found difficult so that i could focus a lot more whereas say in the evening when you have actually studied for 5 6 hours or you're working or you're studying elsewhere also and you spend that much amount of time then you look at sections that you are relatively comfortable at so you have that practice going and you are not <clears throat> being over confident that okay i have this section in my pocket so i will not practice for this that's not something that is advisable also but it's better that you split time across in a day to do all sections equally obviously focus a lot more on st- sections and topics that you are weaker at so do those a lot more so maybe you feel that verbal is something that you are weaker at you spend say 3 hours in a day whereas say if you feel quant is something that you are stronger at you spend say maybe a, an hour and a half so i think you can split that time basis your strengths and weaknesses so i can't actually tell you on a person to person level of how you should split that time but you shouldn't be doing 3 days of uh, lr and then 3 days of quant because uh, for those 3 days you will know everything after 3 days you might not remember anything so that's not yeah, a good so place to be have a mix of all the topics every day yes in case you find that 
you want you need extra practice you can devote extra time to that particular section right so we have another question that there are always questions which come in cet in spite of doing the basics right and uh, like anyone can get stuck to them so what to do in that scenario like you have very good basics and you get stuck on one particular question so like, how to that this again is something that i sort of uh, found from my cricketing days like uh, so playing one over or say six dot balls doesn't mean you doesn't mean you've lost the game but taking that ahead and actually uh, spoiling the next four overs will definitely mean that you lose the game so in case even after like i said right you might be a quant genius you might feel okay uh, say arithmetic is a section that i need to get 100% accuracy on but during the exam you might feel okay this question is something that even after i've given time i am not able to solve so one question does not define it obviously defines whether you get into jbms or not because the cutoffs are so high that one question can decide but that one question will also decide how you give the later part of the exam if you spend too much time there you will press all panic buttons and start uh, solving questions you which you shouldn't because you feel okay i have spent too much time and i have not got enough questions right <clears throat> so the best thing to do is when you feel okay you are giving too much time to one question which is an individual question just leave it take like a 10 second pause have a sip of water and then follow your strategy so that strategy should be flexible but that should be your base to propel you towards that 150 or 160 that you want to score based on the difficulty of exam so in some years there have been scores which are 160 which have been air1 in some years there have been 140 so difficulty level will obviously change but getting stuck on one question would mean that you're giving too much time to that one question in that way you're missing on say 10 easy questions so i think a lot yeah, of it depends on that so those questions and move ahead okay so we have another query which says uh, that what makes jbms students unique okay so we have discussed this why all big companies go to jbms because as the syllabus is same for all mms so you have different colleges they have this mms programs so, and the syllabus is same so why jb why jb so, stands out so to be very honest uh, the syllabus is not same for uh, all mms courses uh, jbims has academic autonomy so what i mean by academic okay. autonomy is you so get to one, select uh, so the one who asked samrat so yeah please listen that the syllabus is not the same so yeah yes clarify jbims that. has academic autonomy where uh, the faculty at jbims or the administration can decide what sort of subjects you will have uh, during your uh, two years there there are obviously subjects which are common for all colleges but in jbms those will be either two or three subjects that the university asks jbms to keep so in every semester in the first year there are two or three subjects which are common for all colleges which have mms but in the second year definitely jbms has subjects which might be different from uh, all the other mms courses and jbms does not have university exams they hold their own own exams and their own grading systems but eventually obviously it comes under mumbai university and you get the degree and mark sheets from uh, mumbai university okay so that is the autonomy and plus the legacy as well right it is uh, it is one of the oldest institutes in india it's uh, over 50 years of legacy so obviously i mean you have alums placed at top positions in different firms so obviously that would help you in that okay All right, so uh, yeah, Abhishek, it was nice interacting with you, and uh, uh, you had uh, like a few users also had queries. You resolved their queries. You told about your journey that how you decided to uh, get into MBA from being a cricketer, and then uh, how did you prepare? How did you do in the examination? How did you relate this examination as a as a cricket final and uh, excel in the same? right so i hope uh, these viewers who are viewing this right like, would be uh, able to replicate the same treat uh, this examination as the one and the only final that they have to play and follow the strategies like be flexible with the strategies and then uh, come out with flying colors in the examination
so uh, yeah so any last piece of advice that you would like to give them Your advice would be on exam day. So obviously, it matters how you prep, right? So say you have, uh, I assume that the exam is in August. So you have like say fifteen to twenty days. Uh, make sure that when you are giving mocks, analyze them well. That's the most important aspect about your preparation is how you analyze mocks. Uh, and on exam day, like I said, be very clear with your strategy, but be very flexible about it because. every year the exam will have different challenges so if you speak to someone who's cracked jbims or the cet in the last two or three years every single one of them will tell you different things so don't be biased because of what they say and they said okay lr is the most difficult so you go in the exam thinking lr is the most difficult and in your year maybe lr is the easiest and you get stuck up on that bias that you have in your mind so i think be very flexible with your strategy be very calm even if it's difficult since it's like a final like i said and if you can't do it just move on don't try to prove your uh, capabilities on one question you are judged on the entire 200 questions and the score that you get from 200 and not from one question or a specific section so i think uh, that would be my final sort of advice and i wish all of the viewers and all of the aspirants who are taking the cet this year all the best and hope you get into jbim okay so i hope they follow your advice uh, uh, they must be analyzing the box right that they must already be doing the the final day the d day advice that you gave them that do not go with any biases right do not go with any uh, pre mindset that this is going to happen this is the case and all and uh, as you rightly said that uh, like if you are stuck you don't take it to your ego just Uh, move it move on because you will not be just only on one question but overall how you do with the paper all right so uh, uh, abhishek it was nice speaking with you and i hope you also had a great time interacting with these students uh, we wish you uh, all the best uh, in all your future endeavors right uh, and uh, yeah so that's it for today right i hope you also enjoyed this session thanks for having me and thanks for having this session uh, it obviously helps to sort of share what i went through when i was prepping and hopefully it adds value to if not all at least some of the aspirants and viewers and they got go on to crack the exam and thanks a lot for having me here and uh, all the best to grade up and the initiatives that they're taking to actually have so many sessions for the aspirants so uh, good luck with all the other initiatives as well and uh, good luck to all the aspirants so yeah so uh, yeah this was abhishek uh, with us uh, with his advice how to uh, uh, excel in cet based on his experience and i hope uh, you would have learned again some few valuable points out of his uh, strategies his test taking strategies and would inculcate them in the examination and uh, would uh, would be the ones would be would be sharing his alma mater soon right so we wish you all the best so uh yeah that's that's it for today's session thanks everyone for watching this and uh, good night everyone